actually meant everything to me. Decades later, just down the hill from Hammersmith Farm, Hugh Auchincloss, known through his friends as Yusha, sits down with me to reminisce on growing up with Jackie Kennedy. They met when they were children in Newport. They spent their summers here together. Here's a picture he took of Jackie in one of the gardens at Hammersmith. July 28, 1942, and it was her birthday. This picture is framed in Mr. Auchincloss's home today. First, she was my girlfriend, then sister, stepsister. His father married Jackie's mother, and that's when their relationship had to change. When my father asked me to be his best man, I said, well, suppose Jackie and I would want to get married. And he said, well, you'll, you'll have a special relationship. They became step-siblings, and they remained close. Mr. Auchincloss remembers Jackie telling him about when she first met John Kennedy. She said, oh, I've just interviewed a very attractive young congressman from Massachusetts. And uh, he's a bachelor, and he's very, very nice, very, he, I'm sure you'll like him. But Jackie warned her stepbrother not to argue with John. You were, the, you were a Marine, he was in the Navy. You went to Yale, he went to Harvard. They quickly became friends, and when Jackie married John Kennedy, they all remained close, even when Jackie moved into the White House. All over his house, even today, you can see original photographs of the Kennedys, from their engagement to their wedding, to pictures from the days when they all sailed together off the coast of Newport. Then there's private correspondence framed up here, too. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he is dead. Fifty years ago this month, Mr. Auchincloss explains where he was when he learned President Kennedy had been shot. It was um, at a luncheon party I was at in New York. He tells me a cook heard the news on the radio from the kitchen, and quickly the news spread. My first impression, I said, oh my God, this, this is like the Roman Empire. This is in Texas. I got on a plane to go to Washington. And that's when Jackie reached out to him for help and for support. She asked him to serve as an usher. She said, Yusha, I want you to escort. You know these heads of state, and I want you to be the first escort her. Two days were very, very busy and very, very uh, emotional. And I get emotional anyway. The days leading up to the president's funeral, busy and difficult. I remember it very well. I wasn't really thinking of myself. I was all, all the time thinking of Jackie. It was a day that forever changed him 50 years ago, a day that changed the country. His duties called, his family needed him. And today, in Mr. Auchincloss's Newport home, just down the hill from Hammersmith. Jack was always late. And Jackie was always on time for everything. 50 years later, he is still surrounded with his family's famous history, history which now belongs to all of us. Tomorrow night, who killed the president? Conspiracy theories have been circulating for years, and now a new book is out challenging two of the past investigations and presenting new evidence, thanks to new technology, on what really may have happened that fatal day. Our interview from the University of Virginia presents some new theories and thoughts as we continue our special report, JFK assassination 50 years later. Allison Bologna, NBC 10 News.